What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Dax. This is Trash Talk. We got a good, good show going on today. Uh, we're going to talk about some cool stuff that happened this weekend. We're going to talk uh, Royal Rumble, uh, which was really interesting to me. Uh, we're going to talk about the trade, Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff switching places. Um, you know, so we, we got a lot that we're going to get into. Uh, I may have to break it up into multiple videos. If that's the case, y'all already know what it is. Like, follow, subscribe. I'll have both of them posted. So let's jump into the Royal Rumble. All right. Royal Rumble came on last night and it was interesting right off the bat. We had the women's tag team championships. Ric Flair did his thing again, which is annoying. Leave your daughter alone. Let her just wrestle. But. Anyway, Ric Flair came out there, did his thing, distracted Charlotte. They lost the championships to Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler. So Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler are the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions again. Uh, we'll see who's going to try to take that belt this time. Then, right after that, we jumped right into the show. You had the Women's Royal Rumble, where my girl Bianca Belair was able to go ahead and turn that thing up. That was pretty cool. She came in at number three and lasted the whole entire match. It was her and Rhea Ripley at the end. At first, when Rhea Ripley came out, I was like, oh, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Rhea, they finna get Rhea on this. But then I was like, you know what? I don't know now, you know. And they both uh, threw Charlotte over. So Charlotte lost twice. And then it was just them two. They went at it. And Bianca came in in the end, and that was pretty cool. Um, and it was really cool when she was thanking her parents and stuff like that. And she sh shout out Tez, you know, which is cool. Tez is my boy. Um, if y'all don't know who Tez is, Tez is Montez Ford from the Street Profits, uh, the former WWE men's uh, SmackDown tag team champions and Raw tag team champions, too. Uh, but it was pretty cool. So she won that. Uh, then you had... Big dog Roman Reigns, the head of the table, coming out against Kevin Owens, which is pretty cool. Uh, that match was phenomenal. It was the last man standing match, and I knew that it was going to go up there behind the screens and stuff like that. But, dude, when they went all the way out there and you were seeing baseball seating, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Dude got – so then he walks out. So he walks through the back of the – because if you didn't watch, I got to explain it to you. He walks through the backstage – goes out and you see like the practice ring he comes out and this is kevin owens walking out and roman reigns runs him over with a golf cart boom runs him over with a golf cart so then he gets out he's beating on him and stuff like that then kevin owens gets the upper hand he start beating on roman this man got on top of the forklift when he was on top of the forklift he got on top of the forklift and jumped off i was like yo my man Roman finna lose. Like, it was crazy. Then after that, they ended up going back out there. And then he handcuffed him to the pole. And I was like, this is where Jay finna come in. Jay gonna come in and cut Roman out. But then Jay didn't do nothing. It was Paul Heyman came in there with the key. He got him. Got him out. And it was over. Put him in the guillotine. Squeeze up real tight. It was done. Then Roman Reigns still the WWE Universal Champion. Um, honestly, I thought they were going to kind of like intertwine something with the fiend when it came to, uh, uh, oh girl, Alexa bliss. When Alexa bliss came out, she was doing her transformation and Rhea was like, nah, bro, <laughs> I flipped her over. I was like, dang, like Rhea Ripley was like, man, I don't care nothing about your demons. <laughs> but, um, so that was pretty cool. And then the men's Royal rumble, like I get so sick of these old guys because like I didn't even like the Drew McIntyre Goldberg situation when the when Drew McIntyre and Goldberg came and it was oh Spear oh Claymore kill oh, Spear oh Claymore I was like we're gonna do this the whole match bro and then Drew Mac and it was always short and then Drew McIntyre went I was just like what was the point of this y'all needed somebody to fill in like they bring these old dudes back but when they brought back Christian and, of course, Edge, and Edge came in at number one and lasted the whole match, I was like, oh, my God. Y'all got to be kidding me. Seriously? Edge? Edge. 
That's what we're doing now. Like, I understand what Mustafa Ali was talking about when Mustafa Ali was like, hey, man, you stealing all the the spots from the young guys. That's true. You were you a Hall of Famer. What do you need? What else do you need to do? Why are you here? Go home. Edge. So now Edge is going to challenge somebody for the championship. Edge ain't trying to make a rest of his career. If he is, it's ridiculous to me. But Edge isn't trying to make another career. You're going to have him go to WrestleMania and fight against either Drew McIntyre or Roman Reigns. Have an extra long match, get beat up and lose. And it's like, oh, you know, the comeback story. WWE begins soft sometimes and I don't like that. But anyway, that's besides the point. Let's switch gears, switch topics. And we're going to go ahead and talk about Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff, Los Angeles Rams, Detroit Lions. All right, so the Detroit Lions and the Rams came together and had a trade. Jared Goff goes to Detroit um, for, and the Detroit got Jared Goff. They got some picks and a plethora of picks. Um, and then you got Matthew Stafford coming from Detroit going to the Rams. Honestly, I think it was a good pick, um, and I think it was a good trade. Now, personally, I I would have tried to do like, excuse me, I would have tried to do like Carolina or um, who was the other team? It was Carolina, and I think it was the Broncos. They offered like one pick and then like a player or, you know, whatever. Like they tried to keep it minimal because it's like, you know, I, I understand that I'm taking your starting quarterback, but your starting quarterback's in his 30s. Like, let's just be honest, you know? And it was cool on their part that they were able to... But, I mean, of course, when you get a trade like you're getting from the Rams, they'll, we'll give you a, a young quarterback, we'll give you a bunch of picks, just take them, you know? Of course you're going to take that deal. That's a good deal. Um, so I don't think it was a bad trade. Um, I think it was a good trade. I think it works out for best for both parties. Um Detroit needed, you know, Detroit needed to part ways with Matthew Stafford. Now, I am very confused on how Matthew Stafford was able to get out of Detroit and Calvin Johnson, uh, I mean, uh, Megatron, uh, Calvin Johnson couldn't get out of Detroit and Barry Sanders, they had to retire early to be able to leave Detroit. But then you got Matthew Stafford that's just like, hey, man, I don't feel like I should be here. And they're like, yep, you know what? You're right. But that's besides the point. So I think it was a good trade for both, to be honest. Um, I think it's going to work out. In, now, I'm not telling you that the Rams are going to – oh, they're going to Super Bowl. I, I'm not telling you that. There's a bunch of moves that have to happen between now and the beginning of the season that we can't start talking about who going to win the Super Bowl and we can't start talking about who going to be the, the team to beat. So don't even start all that. All right. Now, what we can talk about is how Matthew Stafford fits in Sean McVay's system, how Matthew Stafford fits with the, with the Los Angeles Rams, and how Matthew Stafford can add a lot to that team that Jared Goff couldn't. I think Jared Goff's a mediocre quarterback, to be honest. I thought he was a mediocre quarterback when he got drafted. And I was just like, why did they draft this guy? But it is what it is. They traded away some more picks. Everybody knows that the Rams are good at trading away their first-round pick, so we'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to switch over to Deshaun Watson real quick before I go ahead and end it. Um, Rumor is that the Houston Texans are running two first, two second, and two defensive starters for Deshaun Watson. Honestly, I feel like the Houston Texans are trying to do a little bit of Detroit Lions type with Deshaun. I mean, they don't want Deshaun to go, which I understand, but you had your chance to do what you had to do to keep Deshaun, and, and you didn't do that. You felt like you had the the upper hand and you didn't have to worry about that type of stuff. Now you got the guy that's getting ready to leave. He's literally changing his social media over from Houston Texans quarterback to hit me up if you need a quarterback. And now 
you're trying to change it up like, oh, well, you know, I just want to be able to, you know, mend it and the coach coming in, uh, David Cully coming in saying, oh, he's a Houston Texan and that's all my job is and that's why they hired me. Yeah, that's why they hired you, but you're not, <laughs> unless y'all going to do some crazy stuff like Detroit and try to keep the dude and you ain't going to trade him and stuff like that, you're not keeping Deshaun, man. He don't want to be there. So... You guys let me know. Let me know where Deshaun should go. Let let me know what you think Jared Goff going to do. Let me know how you feel Matthew Stafford fit with the Rams. Let me know what you thought about WrestleMania and who should have won this and who should have won that. And how do I get in there so I can come off the top rope? <laughs> let me know what's going on. Hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up. Come on. Bring on the questions. Bring it all right here so that we can talk about it on Trash Talk. As always, it's your boy Dax. And I just appreciate all y'all for watching. Like, follow, subscribe. Peace.